In this video, we're going to show you everything that you need to know about using the Shure SM7B with the Rode PSA1 boom arm. This is by far my favorite boom arm to use with the Shure SM7B. It's extremely fast, extremely reliable, and it really is transparent. What I mean by transparent is you're not thinking about tightening knobs or anything. You're just grabbing the microphone and moving it where you want it and it sticks the landing every time. It doesn't fade, it doesn't raise, it doesn't lift, it doesn't do anything like that. Wherever you put this stand, that's exactly where the microphone will stay. Now, first of all, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below where you can find current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible if you are looking to buy any of this equipment. Now, the first thing that I count on, I always talk about this when I'm buying equipment or trying to analyze or grade equipment, is what is the one job that this thing is supposed to do for me? Why am I spending money on this? And the Rode PSA-1 does that one job of holding the microphone where I put it exactly perfectly every single time. If I'm sitting at my desk, this is a pretty common position for me. I'll have my hands on the keyboard. I'll be looking at the monitor. And I think it's the musician kind of background. I like having the microphone under my mouth pointing up. A lot of people like it to the side or to the top. But my personal preference, and this is one thing that a lot of stands can't do, they can't do this angle where this middle mechanism here is less than 90 degrees. A lot of them have this drift where they want to square that angle there, but the Rode PSA-1 is the most transparent and I can put the microphone right there and it holds perfectly for me every time. Now you'll notice when I lift this that it doesn't droop. If I put it here and let go, it doesn't sag. A lot of other stands, I find myself doing some type of mental math thinking I need to raise this to here because it'll eventually drop to here or maybe it feels a little loose so I need to tighten up a screw. I don't ever think about that when I'm using the Rode PSA-1. Now this sounds like a very sponsored post, but this is just my honest review. I'm not paid by Rode to say this. This is just simply the best stand for the Shure SM7B. Out of the five or six that we have here in the studio, this is the one that I do recommend because like I say, it comes down to that one job. I count on this to hold the microphone when I'm having a conversation, when I'm making a video like this one, and I don't wanna be thinking about, is this screw tight enough, or should I be tightening this screw to hold it here? I just wanna be worried about having perfect microphone placement, and it sticks the landing wherever I leave it. When my hand leaves the microphone, that's where it stays. So now we're gonna work through the microphone stand from the front all the way down. I'm just gonna, talk about some things that I'd like change, and then we're gonna review kind of my summary of the whole setup. So right at the beginning, there's a couple little things that aren't perfect with the Rode PSA-1 if you are using this with the SM7B. You'll notice here that if you turn it, the cable is actually hitting the counterpart to this. It's doing that. So sometimes that can be annoying because you can't actually go past that point so you're trapped in this 90 degree bubble here. You can play with it or try rework the position of this, or you can spend a couple dollars and you can buy this little adapter from Shure that will extend the microphone three inches. So you put this between the microphone and the Rode PSA-1, and that will get you out of this problem. We'll put this on at the end of the video just so you can see how it works, but this is one piece of aftermarket accessory that you do I do recommend having on site you don't run into it all the time like with the angle that I'm standing at for the purposes of this video it's not an issue for me at all so I do prefer to take it out when I don't need it just because I don't like having the big stem at the end of the third joint here we have one two three angles that we can change here and I don't like having the big stem I like it as tight as possible because the SM7B does already have that stem built into it, but we'll put that on at the end so you can see it. Now next we do have these tightening screws for that third stem and the adjustability here. Now for those, it seems like an odd choice to me that they were made chrome. I would have much preferred them to be the same dry black or the same black color as the rest of the stand. Chrome in a studio is never my favorite just because you do have lights, you do have cameras, 
And if this is meant to be used in that type of situation, you don't want reflections going on the chrome. I've even had it lately with a lot of video conferencing that you have glare coming in from a window and it's hitting that. And since by the nature of being a microphone boom stand, this is normally in the shot and reflective surfaces just don't seem like a good idea to me. As we move down, we're going to talk about the design. The design that enables everything that I like about this stand, the scissor action with the two rods here and, and the geometry of it, it's not the best looking compared to some of the other tube style mic stands. But to me, the looks come second because this does this way better. Like no matter where I leave the microphone, that's where it stays. All those tube style stands, if you raise it up, you know it's going to drop like that the second you let go of it. So that is one thing that you do have to be kind of consider of. You do sacrifice some looks of some of the better looking stands for that. With the design of this also, the cable management leaves something to be desired. Rode gives you these Velcro strips. I put the factory ones on. And it's good for them, I guess, because they're smart. They put their logo on it. And it does allow, as you pivot this action, you do use more or less cable. And this Velcro design here that they've kind of come up with does allow for the cable to go through. If you're always switching between XLR microphones and USB microphones, which we do in here sometimes, it's an extremely fast switch to make. It's three pieces of Velcro, you switch the cable and you're good to go. So that sense it's pretty good and helpful. I just don't like the look of it as much as some of the other solutions that are out there. As we work our way down, there's no other real surprises. Sometimes I've noticed that I do need to put in just a flat screwdriver here and give these uh, mechanisms just an eighth of a turn just to tighten them up a little bit. They do loosen up over time. But the most important thing, like I said earlier, is I'm never like trying to crank down a knob mid recording. I really do appreciate about that, that about this stand is if you're doing maintenance, it's maybe once every six months, you give it a tiny little mm, tighten it up a bit. So no big deal there. Now, when it comes to the mounts that come with it, I am using a third party mount here to mount it to the desk. This is the mount that they ship with it for clamping to a stand. It comes with another mount, which we'll talk about in a minute. So this is pretty well designed. It looks really good. It's built really great. It has really good build quality. A couple things that I do miss is like, sometimes when I'm working on a table like this, I've, I've had the desire to kind of clamp or build one of these on the desk and then clamp that. But this gap here is too big. So you end up like shimming it with a bunch of washers or another piece of metal or something to make that happen. So this action doesn't close all the way. I just wish that that was a little bit tighter there. So at least you had the option to, if you wanted to affix it to something that's a bit thinner, it looks like we kind of have three eighths of an inch or so there, um, which is good for most desks. Maybe their intention here is that they don't want you applying this mount to a thin desk because then you might have problems with the leverage and everything that's going on with this. Um, but that is something to consider. Another thing with the design of this clamp is oftentimes I'm walking into a boardroom table doing a quick recording, an interview or a podcast or something like that. I'm working on a high gloss boardroom table. This piece of foam here works really well. I've never been worried about it scratching. Some of the competition to this stand doesn't have as good or as consistent of padding and then I'm having to like throw felt in or something like that just to double check. I've never had that issue with the foam that's built into this uh, clamp. Uh, speaking of foam, I do wish that they had a piece of foam on the bottom clamp, just a little bit there to protect the bottom side of the surface. Sometimes I am working in an environment where I just don't want to risk anything happening to a client's desk or something like that. Uh, if there, but I do bring my own like kind of furniture felts that you'd put under like the leg of a chair or something like that. Um, so there are solutions out there, it just doesn't come with it. So you may need a couple little things for it. Now the stand also does ship with this recessed flange mount that you can drill a hole into your desk there, drop this in and it'll work good. This is beautiful, it fits it really nice, um, but it is chrome again. And you can see as I wave it around, you see all the lights bouncing off. Whenever you're on camera, I hate that. I just wish it was matte black or something like that would be a little bit better. One more note about the desk clamp here is I do have one desk that's not perfectly level. It's, there's 
some weird geometry going on. Anyway, I would, it would be nice if there was a tension screw here because on that desk that's not level, the microphone does tend to creep towards me, which is kind of funny. It's just not tight enough. Um, I've solved it before by put, putting gaff tape around the stem of the stand and that seems to work pretty good. I do just wish that there was a little bit of adjustability here. Also in studio environments like this, especially since they put their logo on it, you'd think that by opening this up and putting in a tension screw, much like the mount that I have here, that give them an opportunity to fly their flag with other stands that are in the show or whatever, because people do change out stands over time. And this is a really well-built clamp. Um, I just wish that I could use it for other stands and I wish that it worked a little bit tighter for this one. So now we can put this stem on and I'll show you how that works. All right, so we put the Shure three inch extension tube on here and you can see that it works much better. I can now turn the microphone any way that I need it to go. When I turn it that way, it actually loosens, but I can tighten it back up um, without hitting these. So it is a little bit more flexible in some environments if you're buying the Rode PSA one. At the same time, buy the stem, throw it in your mic bag because you will count on it sometimes. So that's a lot of kind of, like I say, like ticky tack sort of stuff. Some things could be black, some things could be, you know, a little bit better looking with the cable management. It can be a little haggard sometimes, but in terms of this stand doing its one job the best, and that one job is when I grab the microphone, it holds exactly where I leave it. There's no other stand that I've run into yet. There might be other stands like it, I just haven't had hands on, but it, this is by far the most reliable one. And despite the looks compared to the tube style stands, I do still recommend that all my friends buy this one because like I said, no matter where you leave this microphone, it works perfectly. When you put the stem on, you do have to tighten up these screws a little bit just because we do have extra leverage with that three inch stem. But still, once you do get that tightened up, you can see here almost any angle that you can come up with, you can do W's or anything crazy. It just sits absolutely perfect, which is one thing that I do love about this. If you have any questions or if there's anything I haven't covered in this video, I think I've run through pretty much everything I've experienced with this stand. But if there's anything I missed, please do leave a question or comment down in the comment section below. If you have this stand and you have a different experience with it, please do let me know down in the comment section. Again, if you are looking at buying this, please do check out the links down in the description. Those will help you find the best price possible. There are always deals and bundles and we do our best to keep those links updated all the time to make sure that you find the best deals possible. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.